spoiler alert, the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D is now the fastest gaming CPU on the market. Hands down, it's the champ, it's the new king, it's got the title. But the title alone isn't everything, and the full story is actually a bit more complex. For example, whether the CPU's gaming performance is A, worth the price, and B, even noticeable, is heavily determined by a number of factors, like your hardware specs, what hardware you might be coming from if you're upgrading to the CPU, and your overall setup configuration, which we're gonna take a look at today. So yes, it is the new title holder, but it's circumstantial. That'd be like if I gave myself the title of most attractive YouTuber in the dark. You, you, you could make sweet, sweet, passionate love to me all night. But once the lights come on, you're gonna go, ooh, I should have done more research on this fella. Anyway, it's time for a new CPU review. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by Rocket Money. Guys, as some of you know, I have a crippling addiction to Pokemon trading cards. Pikachu. I can't tell you how many times I've almost lost my house because I blew all my money getting loaded on booster packs. That's when Rocket Money stepped in and saved my life. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money so you can pocket the savings. Now I can afford Pokemon cards without having to sell legally acquired catalytic converters. I've been using Rocket Money to easily cancel unwanted subscriptions. It securely identifies recurring charges and takes care of the cancellations for you, making customer service calls ancient history. You can even cancel from within the app with just a few taps. Might as well tap some waifus while you're at it. Me? Simply upload a photo of your bill, and a few taps later, Rocket Money will automatically negotiate your bills, from internet services to cable and phone bills. Members who use all of Rocket Money's features save up to 740 bucks a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Don't let unwanted spending make you so desperate for Pokemon cards that you're doing favors behind the pawn shop on Lakewood. We've all been there. Go to rocketmoney.com slash bitwit, or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash bitwit to get started for free. Let's take a closer look at this little silicon data, shall we? The 9800X3D is the direct successor to the 7800X3D. It's using new Zen 5 cores on the new Zen 5 architecture, featured on the Ryzen 9000 series CPUs, and it's still using socket AM5, so it is backwards compatible with existing 600 series motherboards. So that's uh, like the B650, uh, X670, X670E boards. This will slot into them just fine. You will need a BIOS update though to actually produce a video signal, so bear that in mind if you're upgrading. Alongside this CPU launch is also the release of uh, the new 800 series motherboards. We're gonna talk a little bit more about those in just a bit. This is also the first Ryzen 9000 series CPU to feature 3D vCache, uh, but this ain't your mama's 3D vCache, okay? This is second gen 3D vCache, y'all, the very first of its kind. First gen 3D vCache that we saw with the 7800X3D, the 5800X3D, for example, for those last two generations, that 3D vCache was positioned in between the IHS heat spreader and the CPU cores. But now it's moved to the bottom underneath the cores, putting the cores directly up against the IHS, where you're gonna get better thermal resistance, better heat conductivity, which is gonna translate to lower temperatures. And that also, it's like a domino effect, so that's also going to lead to increased clock speeds and better core residency. So the amount of time that cores can spend at a higher clock speed is going to be increased as well. And that's just, going to lead to better performance overall. In fact, AMD is claiming that the multi-threaded performance of this chip is gonna be much closer to a Ryzen 7 9700X, which is not too bad. Another nice feature about this CPU is that it's the first X3D chip that's fully overclockable. Every other chip that's had X3D or 3D vCache, rather, uh, has only been overclockable via Precision Boost Overdrive, PBO, PBO2, uh, Curve Optimizer, that sort of thing. This is still overclockable with all those, but it, it can also have, uh, you can also change the core ratio. So it has a fully unlocked multiplier, which is fantastic if you're an enthusiast and you really wanna get in there and tinker with the settings and, and make granular adjustments um, in order to eke out a bit more performance. I think most users are gonna be perfectly fine overclocking this with PBO2. It's just so simple and easy, it's a complete no-brainer. But it is nice that enthusiasts who wanna get their hands dirty, uh, roll up their sleeves, and, uh, and, and really have an advanced understanding of overclocking are able to do uh, just that now with, with this X3 3D chip. As for the new platforms, we've got X870 and X870E, which are very similar. The main difference 
versus IO. Uh, so they're gonna have a different number of PCIe lanes, uh, USB, SATA, that sort of thing. But what both of them have in common is USB 4 support. So that's the latest USB standard up to 40 gigabits per second. And then uh, greater, uh, broader support for PCIe Gen 5. So you can now do uh, a graphics card with full um, by 16 lanes. So full 16 lanes with a Gen 5 graphics card and still have four lanes for an NVMe drive concurrently at the same time, which is very nice to see. So here's a quick spec comparison between the 9800X3D and 7800X3D. Remember, in order for the 9800X3D to be crowned the new gaming king, the one chip that it has to beat in gaming benchmarks is the 7800X3D because that's the old champ. And here's a quick side-by-side -side of the specs where you can see all the similarities and differences between the two. So for the 9800X3D, we see a max boost of 5.2 gigahertz. That's 200 megahertz higher than the 7800X3D. Likewise, we see an even bigger jump on the base clock for the 9800X3D at 4.7 gigahertz. That's 500 megahertz higher than the 4.2 gigahertz base clock of the 7800X3D. Most everything else is identical between the two chips. You've got a TDP of 120 watts, a TJ Maxx of 95C. The recommended cooler for both chips is a 240 to a 280 millimeter AIO. And then uh, the one other difference here is the max memory speed. So you've got up to 5,600 uh, two by 16 gigs on the 9800X 3D versus 5,200 uh, two by 16 X on the 7800X 3D. But of course, uh, both of these figures can be bumped up very, very easily um, with a, a decent kit of RAM. You could easily, you know, overclock these to, to 6,000 speed uh, DDR5. The last thing here to note is the price. Uh, sorry, I should have made the, the 9800X 3D's price in green because it is different. Um, it's 479 MSRP, that's in US dollars, versus 477, which is the current price on Amazon for the 7800X 3D. I mean, it's more or less the same price. It's $2 difference. Um, it's, it's more or less the same price. So the 9800X 3D doesn't really have to be a whole lot faster than its predecessor in order to be the better value. However, because the 7800X 3D has been around for, for much longer, obviously, uh, it's much more eligible for price cuts, discounts, and like Black Friday deals and that sort of thing, which is coming up right around the corner. Um, so we could very well see this price drop significantly, potentially, which at that point, the 9800X 3D's performance would really have to outpace the 7800X 3D by uh, a more substantial margin in order for it to still be worth it. Uh, but let's move on to power consumption. This is our first real benchmark here. Lower is better, obviously. And uh, you can see with our system draw, that's the green bar in uh, Cyberpunk 4K, we have a slightly higher total system draw with the 9800X 3D at 741 watts versus 729 watts on the 7800X 3D. When we switch over to Cinebench multi-threaded, uh, the multi-threaded test, we go from 309 watts on the 9800X 3D to 281 watts on the 7800X 3D, and that's total system draw as well. And then the biggest difference that we see is with the individual CPU package power. We're just measuring the CPU itself, not the total system. So with uh, Cinebench again in multi-threaded multi -threaded tests, we're getting 149 watts with the 9800X 3D versus just 91 watts with the 7800X 3D. And you would think with that vast difference in, in wattage and power consumption that we would see a vast difference in temperatures as well with the 9800X 3D running a lot warmer, but that's not the case. It's pretty similar when you're looking at the Cinebench multi-threaded stress test, 75C on the 9800X 3D versus 74C on the 7800X 3D. And then if you take the average, because uh, so that was max, so if you take the average, it's 70C on the 9800X 3D versus 71C on the 7800X 3D. That's all within margin of error as far as I'm concerned. These temperatures are identical between the two. The real difference comes when you look at gaming. So in Cyberpunk, this is again at 4K, uh, the max temp that the 9800X 3D got was 59C. It didn't even crack 60. And the 7800X 3D got up to 66C, a whole seven degrees warmer. So that does make the 9800X 3D better poised for uh, limited cooling environments. So for example, um, if you have an HTPC that has a low profile cooler, or if you're, you're building a small form factor gaming system, then temperature is a very limiting factor in, in those types of builds and a seven degree drop like this is definitely uh, going to pique the interest of a lot of those small form factor enthusiasts. That leads us right into undervolting, which is a very popular 
cooler practice for limited cooling scenarios. Undervolting is great. It's a way to hit the same clock speeds at a lower voltage curve so that you can potentially even give yourself a bit of an overclock or at least sustain similar performance while lowering your temperatures uh, oftentimes significantly. And that's what we saw here. Obviously your mileage may vary here because it really depends on the quality of your silicon. I happened to hit the silicon lottery here because I was able to get away with a pretty aggressive curve, or it was just AMD giving me a golden sample because I'm pressed. I'm not ruling that out in the slightest, but for whatever reason, it's still nice to see um, sort of the peak of what this chip could do. So with PBO2 Curve Optimizer, I got away with a the max negative 30 offset. That's the highest you can go. Um, I've had chips that can only do minus 10 or minus 15. Usually most can hit minus 15, but minus 20 sometimes, rarely ever do I get one that's minus 30. So with that adjusted curve, we saw the temperature drop from 75C stock to just 61C. That's a 19 degree reduction. Now we're running 19 degrees cooler. The CPU package power has dropped significantly as well, going from 147 watts to just 111 watts. That's a 25% reduction in power. And you can see here our performance in Cinebench has not really changed at all. Um, this is margin of error. We're pretty much running exactly the same performance that, that we were at stock but just at a, a much better behavioral profile. Here's a closer look at Cinebench performance comparing the 9800X 3D to the 7800X 3D. We saw a substantial gain in multi-threaded performance uh, going from 18,170 on the 7800X 3D all the way up to 23,301 on the 9800X 3D. That is a, uh, it's a big jump. It's a big jump and it definitely validates what AMD was say saying uh, that I mentioned earlier, which is the multi-threaded performance of the 9800X 3D is gonna be a lot closer to a Ryzen 7 9700X, which uh, you can, I, I can say that's very true from looking at this graph here. Single-threaded performance is a more marginal bump, but still uh, a measurable difference going from 1813 on the 7800X 3D to 2095 on the 9800X 3D. Moving on to Time Spy Extreme, our first look at gaming performance on the 9800X 3D. We got a, a graphic score of 19,105 versus 19,087 on the 7800X 3D. That is not much at all. That's pretty much negligible. Um, the overall score, however, was a bit more improved, going from 14,364 on the 7800X 3D to 15,553 on the 9800X 3D. I was expecting the opposite. I thought the graphics score was gonna have a bigger lead for the 9800X 3D, but maybe this, this higher overall score could be partially explained by uh, the, the massive edge in multi-threaded performance that we just saw with the 9800X 3D in that Cinebench test. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, our first AAA title here. Uh, this was run at 1080p. All these games were run at 1080p, and you can see the full list of hardware specs that I used for the testing at the very bottom of the slide. But here, uh, we could see that the 9800X 3D gets uh, has a substantial Substantial lead over its predecessor, going from 323 frames per second on average to 369, and then 1% lows did see a marginal bump as well. Not as big, but it's there, 178 to 192. In God of War, we see less exciting results. The 9800X 3D was just a little bit faster uh, than its predecessor, going from 296 to 313 frames per second on average, and 1% lows were pretty much identical. Rainbow Six Siege, we once again see a nice uplift with the 9800X 3D scoring 688 frames per second on average versus 604 on its predecessor. But then we see the reverse with 1% lows where the 7800X 3D is outperforming the 9800X 3D going from 325 to 380. That's a substantial bump there, nothing to be looked over. And uh, it's kind of hard to say exactly why this is. It could be just because the 7800X 3D is more mature, has more mature drivers, it's been around for longer. This could shift over time, it might not. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's, that's what we're getting there. In Total Warhammer 3, this is a new title that I've added to the benchmark suite, and I'll be using it from here on out for, for the time being. Uh, the 9800X 3D saw a fairly decent jump in actually more so in 1% lows than in average frame rates. Um, in average frame rates, it went from 460 on the 7800X 3D to 493. And then uh, the bigger jump was in the 1% lows with 313 to 372 on the 9800X 3D overall. Forza 5 was a modest victory for the 9800X 3D, going from 341 frames per second on average to 358, and a slight uptick in 1% lows, going from 228 to 243. 
last AAA game we tested was Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, this was without any kind of DLSS. In fact, we didn't use DLSS or uh, you know FSR for any of these titles. It was just straight rasterization. The 7800X3D saw an average frame rate of 259, and that got bumped up to 287 on the 9800X3D. 1% lows were slightly increased as well, going from 161 to 176 on the latest Zen 5 chip. That brings us to the total frames rendered across all of the AAA games that we just looked at. At 1080p, once again, you can see average and 1% percent lows side by side and uh yeah it's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty nice bump it's a 10 percent uplift in average frame rates for the 9800 x3d over the 7800 x3d that's the that's the whole takeaway here uh, one of the big takeaways here is 10 percent uplift on average in frame rates uh over the previous fastest gaming chip in the world. So 2,283 frames per second on average with the 7800X3D up to 2,508 frames per second on average for the 9800X3D. 1% lows were slightly increased going from 1,397 on the older chip to 1,446. Combining that data with the pricing for each CPU, we can determine the frames per dollar ultimately telling us which of these CPUs is the better value, which one is giving you more bang for the buck, more frames per each dollar that you spend. The 9800X3D, and this is again at 1080p, mind you. So this is gonna be a lot different at 4K, which we'll take a look at in a sec. 9800X3D at its price of 479 offers 5.2 frames per dollar. That slightly outpaces the 4.8 frames per dollar that you get with the 7800X3D at more or less the same price. But again, this could very well shift dramatically if we see a price reduction, any kind of price cut, a Black Friday deal on the 7800X3D. There's very little chance you'll see some good deals or good sales on the 9800X3D anytime soon because it's such a new CPU. So uh, this could be, this, this chart could look completely different in, in a week or two. So just bear that in mind. And just for shits and gigs, I ran all of the same AAA games at 4K just to show how little of a difference the 9800X3D makes when you're in a GPU bound scenario. So that's just a little PSA slash reminder that there's, you know, the benchmark way of testing things. Like when you, when you see benchmarks in, in reviews like this, uh, they're not necessarily indicative of real world practical performance um, that you might get, unless you're using the exact same specs and, and gaming at the same resolution that we're testing at. So I just wanna point that out there because I know there's gonna be some people out there buying a 9800X3D, the 4K monitor, and they're gonna expect 10% more performance than if they had a 7800X3D that they could have bought for, you know, $380, $100 cheaper on Black Friday. Uh, that's not the case. Unless you're gaming at 1080, some lower resolution, just, just want to put that out there. Don't want anyone wasting their money. Um, frames per dollar, this is, uh, again, frames per dollar for, again, at 4K. If you're gaming at 4K with a 4090, there is no effective difference going from a 7800X3D to a 9800X3D if they're at the same price. The value only changes if uh, one of these variables change. And the most, like, the most likely variable, again, to change there is the pricing of that uh, 7800X3D. So in summary, th this is a solid CPU. It's not face-meltingly earth-shattering. It's a 10% bump over last gen. It's not 20, 25% or anything like that. It's not like if you have a 7800X3D, you should just go out and just buy this immediately. This is a great upgrade if you're three or four generations old, I would say, ballpark. Your mileage may vary depending on your needs. Um, or if you're just trying to build a brand new system and you just want to chase the fastest or the highest frame rates possible, this is your jam. It's the new champ. So kudos to it for that, I guess. Uh, the lower temperatures are really nice. It's gonna be a great uh, candidate for small form factor builds and uh, fully overclockable is, is great. Unlock multiplier, I'm very happy about that. But that's all for this one. If you got anything out of this video, please consider clicking the notification bell. If you're subscribed to this channel, YouTube has completely stopped recommending or feeding my video to anyone when I go uh, live with a new video. So if you would like updates anytime I publish uh, anything at all, please click the notification bell, it would help a lot. Thank you very much for watching though. Have a good one guys. I will see y'all in the next video.